Okay. Yeah, no <laughs> way to do it now. We, we, we wish really you could, though, because complain. some of them are... Is there a law against it? <laughs> well, there's more laws protecting us. Now, this is what we were here more than anything at the, at the group on Saturday pointing out that they have the right of political protest under Section 28 of the Crimes Act Commonwealth and Section 24F of the Crimes Act Commonwealth. Section 24F gives you the ability to bring about a com uh, your Commonwealth rights to an officer claiming to be part of the system and they cannot restrict you in that process of uh, pointing out your rights. Section 28, political protest, if anyone hinders your political protest, then there's three years in prison for them. What is that 24 really? 24 F of the crimes that's going to be 24 F. They'll have to, have to recruit a lot more police, right? What's the other one called? Yeah. 24 F and 28. Uh, so uh, they, were, they were just, wow, we didn't know that. Um, they have employed a QC, who's an ex Supreme Court judge. Merkel. Merkel, we think his name is. We're going to look into this a bit further. Um, and apparently he's willing to take that argument into the federal court and present that argument. And of course Doyle has got a real headache on his hands because their argument is specifically based on the Constitution. Beautiful. Good. So they're, they're backing away. Funnily enough, when, when Calvin and I were there, um, a few police officers were starting to gather and they were eyeballing Saw for Kelvin, and uh, funnily oh, enough, enough, they didn't—they didn't hang around too long. They—they they, they sort of saw fit to bolt very quickly and not come back uh, after serving their fraudulent piece of paper, uh, and they didn't come back. We didn't call them maggots. Unfortunately, there was. I don't think it hit the light of day, did it? No, <laughs> the, the biggest problem we had there were there were a lot of. Uh, other groups trying to come in to influence that group into their way of thinking, and they were um, was it the social alliance? Social alliance group, and, the yeah, and they were they had more um, aggressive means of protesting mind, which doesn't help the cause, and in fact makes the whole thing look um, a rather shady. And this is what we don't want. Now the people we spoke to uh, who organised the whole thing. Uh, they were very interested in what we had to say. They weren't interested in anything um, to do with any form of violence. So, uh, in that sense, it was good to see that and hear that. So, they will take us, they took my card, and um, I dare say we'll hear from them soon. They have had representatives come to our Ashburton meeting. They've been definitely fired up about it, and it was as a result of that that they were able to employ the QC to put this constitutional claim in. So we're there to help them down that road a bit further uh, and bring about a change for the better, the quicker the better. Now, we better get back to this um, fine. speeding fine. Now, speeding fines, um, one of the people that do the, come to this group um, and is one of our researchers at Ashford, and Steve Mitchell's got a website. Um, called uh, X Facing, and on that website he's got it's F A C I E X D X um, dot uh, info. Pretty sure. Yeah. Now um, he's delved deeply into the people that own the traffic camera office, the infringements court, um, and the people that find you for. Travelling too quick or whatever, and he finds out he's found out that it belongs to a family. What? Oh, really? Yeah. Um, oh, it's privatised. It's totally and absolutely privatised. It's called Tenex Solutions. That's Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin in there too. Yeah, True. Lockheed Martin. Right. Yeah. There's a whole lot of bad people that are involved in that, and this is why we can't give any weight or any. Uh, don't pay fines that come from that group because they don't have anything to do with the law of the land. They're about creating their own laws. So the best way to challenge those sort of fines is A, does the infringements court or their office 
um, come under section 71 of the Commonwealth Constitution. Oh, it does. I just couldn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yet to see it, yet to see it. And the next question is, uh, when you go to section 51 of the Commonwealth Constitution, which is there, and you go to subsection 15, I think it's 11, it's 15, do you? Is it? There we go, it's 15. What do we see there? So let's go back to 51. 51, the Parliament shall, subject to this Constitution, have power to make laws for the peace, order and good government of the Commonwealth with respect to weights and measures. Weights and measures. So this is one of the main reasons we brought Parliament and government into being, is to oversee weights and measures. So the key to this is Part 5 of the Constitution Act says the Constitution and the laws made by the Federal Parliament under the Constitution are binding on all courts. Now the next link is weights and measures, is one of those things. So, when you go and buy a kilo of tomatoes at a green grocer, you know that that weighing device he's using to weigh that kilo of tomatoes is the same as the green grocer down the road, or any weighing device that you purchase in the public realm because they all have to fall under what's called the National Measurements Act, 1960 Commonwealth, Section 10 of that Act, subsection G and H. We'll go through Section 10, measurements to be ascertained in accordance with appropriate standards of measurement, certified references, reference materials, or certified measuring instruments. So we go to subsection. We go to do this when for any legal purpose. Sorry. Pick up on the word. It is necessary to ascertain whether a measurement of physical quantity, okay, physical quantity, for which there are Australian legal units of measurement have been made or being made in uh, terms of those units. The facts shall be ascertained by means of, by reference to, by comparison with, or by derivation from, and we then go to subsection G and H, G saying a certified reference material, H a certified measuring instrument. So, who and what does, does all that mean? Yeah. Basically, uh, <laughs> if a uh, weighing device reads in kilos or pounds or ounces, then that's the physical quantity. Okay. And with respect to measuring instrument, measuring time over distance, then it will read that in kilometres per hour, miles per hour, um, or whatever, over a given amount of time. So, certification then falls on a body created under this Act called the National Measurements Institute. The National Measurements Institute has its headquarters in Sydney and it has an office in every capital city of Australia. Now, the one here in Melbourne is at Clayton, uh, the Monash University campus, and you can click on, you can put National Measurements Institute into Google, and there is a photograph of the Clayton branch. It's a very modern building, um, and uh, the people there are quite busy because all measuring instruments have to be certified through this group. Now, the gentleman that runs the head office in Sydney is a gentleman by the name of Dr. Richard Britton, B R I T T O N. And the moment speed measuring devices landed in this country, he immediately put a letter to every single state police force asking them to hand them up to fulfil subsections G and H of section 10 of the National <coughs> Measurements Act and also the regulations that tie to this Act. All the, 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 the blow dryers, the, any measuring device in the public realm. Guess where they're certified, certified for Victoria? Um, National Measurements Institute, wouldn't they? Oh, definitely at Clayton. But what they did is they created this thing called the Road Safety Act. And in the Road Safety Act, they thought, hang on, we know none of these instruments will comply. Right? Because when the National Measurements Institute brings, uh, uh, is presented with a measuring device, 
Their job is to check how accurate that device is within a plus or minus. Okay, if that plus or minus is too much, then they can't certify. Okay. And they also lay out the regulations on how the device is to be used. If the device falls within their standards and it does fulfil the requirements to be able to be certified, then they then bring out an operator's manual on how to operate that device and how regularly it should be serviced to maintain its plus minus. So, you then put a letter off to every one of these police forces, and he is still waiting to this day for a reply. But the state's been, okay, we're going to do this outside of that, even though the state law and the Commonwealth law said that that device has to be handed up to the National Measurements Institute. So they said, okay, we'll go to RMIT. So we'll go to the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, and we'll ask them calibrate the device. It's a play on words here. So when you look at the Road Safety Act, the device has to be calibrated at least once every 12 months. Not certified. So if they put the word certified in, they offend section 19B of this Act and it's a $6,000 fine for every time they use that instrument in the public realm. Because they're, in, they're trying to make out that it complies with the Act. It's a deception. Okay. So, 